Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television. Let's talk about the week that was in TV. <laughs> Joining us this afternoon is Josh McCuga. All right, Sinead. I tell you what, I was just going to say one thing. Shall we begin? Ooh. <laughs> Spoiler alert. We shall. We shall. Sinead, who else is here? Also joining us today is Emma Fife. That is right. I am here. I am repping some Game of Thrones yes. gear. It's like a kind of rock. 90s rock mixed yeah. with, I mean, Masters of the Universe. Yeah, exactly. Which is more like 80s, yeah. but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Crush yeah, exactly. It. Thank you. Crush thanks, it. thanks. Yeah. Like a little Guns N' Roses into perhaps, you know, like that, that early 90s Pearl Jam. Sure. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just Emma, what I was Emma's going watching the, the, the Defiant ones on HBO. <laughs> Lollapalooza right now. Right, 100%. Correct. Nailed it. Sinead, who else is here? Also here, also looking like Lollapalooza. <laughs> David Griffin. Watermelon <laughs> Palooza. So, I, I was at the Woo! mall yesterday, and when I go shopping, I think I'm like, what would Josh McCougal wear? <laughs> That's all these like three. I have some other shirts at Comic Con. I'm coming in hot to Comic Con. Oh, I'm so excited. So I'm excited to wear some of these new shirts. So this is, this is what I'm rocking. Watermelon today. Actually, Watermelon like, Monday. First. No joke, like Googled like geeky Aloha shirts inspired <laughs> by David Griffin and all of his Aloha shirts. Yep, yep. It's uh, Tommy Bahama's it's special party over Comic Con here. line. It's the <laughs> Comic Con of Bahama. Uh, the, now, David, I would like to take that shirt and just turn it into pants because I'll be wearing loud yes, pants yeah, all weekend. Pants. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, as most of you guys know, we're all going to be at Comic Con this week. So if you're there, come and say hi to us. Uh, we're going to do a Comic Con preview in a bit. Before we get into it, I think we should just say real quick, first ever, uh, Doctor Who yeah. will be a female. Yes, I'm very, very excited mm -hmm. about this. For me, it was like I was crossing my fingers like one way or another for it to be either a person of color or a woman, and uh, lo and behold, it was a woman. I, I really enjoyed everything that they did with Missy this season, who was, uh, I guess, spoilers if you're not caught up on Doctor Who, uh, <laughs> is a is a future incarnation of the master uh, who was previously only seen as being a man. So I feel like the timing is right for it mm -hmm. to be a lady. And Jodie Whittaker from Broadchurch is playing her, keeping it in the family. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. Awesome. David, how you feel about it? It was excited when I saw the reveal. I was like, oh, it's the, the woman from Broadchurch. Because yeah. I'm watching Broadchurch right now because it's on BBC America. I think they just aired the third episode. A great season. I mean, she's blonde in Doctor Who. So that's yeah. a little different. But yeah. I, she's a great actress. Yeah. I'm always like, oh, that girl should get more work. She's good. And the thing that's really interesting about it is because there's been since... Uh, towards the end of Stephen Moffat's run as showrunner, there's been a lot of fallout, mm -hmm. fallout within the Doctor Who fandom of people that are like, I'm not going to watch the show anymore. I don't care. Like, his writing is lazy, blah, blah, blah. And all of these people, literally everyone I know that was super, like, meh about Doctor Who following this announcement, they're like, I got to get back into the show. And people I know who've never watched Doctor Who are suddenly really interested in it. Now it's so. a showrunner of Broadchurch. Yeah. Like, I watched a few episodes this season. It's it's a good show. I mean, it's it's safe. You sure. know, it's very, like, episodic. You yes. know, they, they solve it, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of each episode. But it wasn't... I know it's a family show, so no, it can't be dark. But right, it makes right. there's a little more edge to it, mm -hmm. you know? And maybe with the... Because Broadchurch is a yes. really heavy show. Yes, so it is. Yes. I'm kind of excited to see this new season. I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really interested. Mm -hmm. way, to, way to do it. Doctor Who. Yeah. I'm digging it. And listen, she has an amazing... Uh, IMDb. I was going to say, because I know she's from Broadchurch, but yeah. I she's been in Attack yeah, the she, Blog. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. in Attack the she's Blog. She looks horribly familiar to me. She's an episode of Black Mirror. Oh, yeah. Uh, Her episode of Black Mirror is yeah. good. Uh, really, really well done. She's, she oh, almost, that's right. That was one with uh, Toby Kebbell, yep. right? Oh, she has like right, a very, yeah. like a, an, a uh, Carrie Mulligan look to her, but not as like, Carrie Mulligan's so like nice looking. This girl could play a doctor. Like, she's a badass. Yeah. Carrie Mulligan's yeah. more like, I like her. I could be her friend. Right. This one, it's like, she's a badass. Kicking ass. Mm -hmm. yeah. Taking names on Broadway. Don't sleep on Carrie Mulligan, though. Don't sleep. I like Carrie Mulligan. I'm not saying I'm not sleeping <laughs> with Carrie. Well, I mean, on Carrie. No, said, don't Son sleep. Of a <laughs> Whoa. David. Whoa, I wasn't taking it there. Like, David. I wasn't taking it there. New, new. All right. New. Sinead, I want you to tell the fans mm -hmm. what you did last night. Um, so last night, <laughs> it was uh, National Ice Cream Day yesterday. Boom. So I uh, made myself a very large ice cream sundae, Neapolitan, my fave. Okay. And then I put on the premiere of Game of Thrones. I have never seen Game of Thrones. I think I've only known about it from being on the show and a little bit here and there just through social media and stuff like that. So I did watch it. Um, In your defense, Pretty Little Liars is the Game of Thrones of Freeform. 100% for sure. <laughs> um, but I did watch it. I did write a really awesome synopsis. Okay. Spoiler heavy. 
Okay. Um, but I did write a synopsis about all my thoughts while I watched the show. Okay, before we get into our actual Game of Thrones review from the, uh, let's, let, I would love to hear Sinead's <laughs> synopsis of season seven, episode one, Game sure. of Thrones. So, spoiler alert, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. No. spoiler alert. There you go, there throw you up go. the spoiler alert. Um, also written in a pink gel pen. <laughs> I bought a fresh gel pen from Blix yesterday just for this occasion. Now, can you explain for the audience and myself, what is a gel pen? A gel pen is, um, a reg it's like a pen, yeah. like mm -hmm. a regular a pen, yeah. pen, but the actual ink that's in there is like like velvety, mm -hmm. silky, I guess is the way you could describe it. Like, look yeah. how it shines. Yeah, oh, it's, 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 very, it's lovely, oh. it's very lovely, yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, you guys and, ready? And there's nothing says Game of Thrones quite like a pink gel pen, which I don't know if you guys noticed, but when Samuel Tarley was in the uh, in in the Citadel, he was using a pink gel he pen. He was to take a, notes exactly, yeah, to take do, notes and do. and write yeah. in his journal about yeah. how he dreamed and of going in the forbidden section. Buckets, but yes, <laughs> yes. No, that montage. Okay, we Today, will get to that. Let's okay. crush it. All right. Winter has come, so Filch is celebrating with a feast. <laughs> and by celebrating, I mean murdering them. And by Filch, I mean Maisie Williams, who's clearly a crazy bitch. <laughs> now there are more crazy people who look like they belong in The Walking Dead. Also, the BFG. Now some kid named Stark has come to warn of the Night King, but I've already forgotten what they were talking about because Jon Snow and his sexy man bun are preparing for war or something, but everybody's getting on his case, especially this redhead bitch, but his decision oh is God. final. Now see Cersei is walking around on a map, listing all the people that she hates, which apparently is like everybody, but whatever, because her leather ball gown is magnificent. <laughs> um, now some guy with a really bad British accent wants to marry Cersei. I'm pretty sure this guy's from like Ohio. But now I'm looking away because bedpan shit, which is totally uncalled for. Also, dead man peen, also uncalled for. Side note, I still have no effing clue why everybody is so mad. Maybe they're cold. What the actual fuck is Ed Sheeran doing? <laughs> He's leading his Cub Scouts troop in a campfire song. Cute. <laughs> Maisie's come to join. Ed Sheeran must have a really big crush on her because he's so nervous that he hasn't said a damn word. Now, there's some more cold people looking into a magical fire. One of them is really mad, but I don't blame him because I'd be livid if I only had one eyebrow. Okay, some guy with a scary arm just gave me a fright. It's scaly, and it looks like you should really get that shit checked out or, like, put some moisturizer on it. Ooh, finally some dragons. Now Daenerys is checking if the sand is wet. It is. Her braids are so pretty. Peter Dinklage is here too. They're about to play a really large board game, I think. Oh, show's over. <laughs> hey. Hey. Sinead DeFries. She is our own Khaleesi, our own uh, Daenerys Stargaryen over here. Well I'm done, gonna, Sinead. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I legitimately don't understand what's happening in that show. I know everyone's mad. I know that they're fighting some zombies right. and I know they're fighting each other and Good. apparently like they all have like similar last names yes yeah. also I'm gonna make a prediction that Jon Snow and Daenerys are totally gonna bone but then I found out that they're related yeah. so. mm, but it's but that also hasn't stopped anybody normal well, there you go yeah within within the series itself sure. but particularly within the Targaryen yes. family so Cersei and the guy you thought was from Ohio yeah he's actually from Sweden I think uh, Denmark Denmark yeah I just looked it up uh, my mom Mrs. Griffin is from Ohio <laughs> yes Mrs. Griffin yeah she is <laughs> from Ohio. Oh. Knows that British accent was terrible. Uh, it's well, tough you know they're they're to supposed British. to be from the Iron Islands, which is like kind of like yeah. the Hicksville, yes. but in the middle of the ocean. Yes. Uh, very well done. Yeah, yeah. guys. Mm -hmm. I think I got all the main points. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, did. yeah, yeah you, you did. Yeah, you covered it. You did. You did. <laughs> What's that shit uh, doing here? <laughs> now, I think you should probably do this for the rest of the season. Yeah, yeah. I can do it for sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good, okay, good, good. but let's start. You should with... probably post that online. I know. I was thinking notes. about it. Yeah, I think it's important. Okay, but let's start by talking about that Ed Sheeran cameo because a lot of people were like all up in arms about it, and I didn't think it was a big deal. It's not like he broke out into song. I mean, they, by they, the they, fire. they've done it before. No, they had um. Sigur Ross, the uh, Icelandic band on yeah. in season two at the Purple Wedding. Yeah. And like, I think, think Joffrey Rose... like threw, they're not as popular as Ed Sheeran. And Ed Sheeran. Really. Right, of course. Different. But of course. also it would have been less awkward if they gave him some lines after that because yeah. then he just sat mm. there just like awkwardly looking at people. Well, here's the thing too. <laughs> He's creepy. The only thing yeah, that, he was, that's all he did. I, I actually really enjoyed that scene because- Yeah, uh, I liked I, it too. Here's the thing, and I've said it before on multiple shows. I think that Arya Stark's storyline since season five has been atrociously boring. Just boring, boring, boring until like the last couple episodes of last season. It was really boring. Well, I mean, because it was all of it. I mean, then the thing is, in this episode, we did get to see the payoff for that boring storyline, which was that she became like a faceless a person, basically. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like, uh, uh, Ciro Farrell, her, right. uh, her, like, 
dance sword instructor mm. and and uh, um, the other guy. Gosh, I'm totally drawing a blank on his name. Who Jack gave her the coin? Hagar or yeah, yeah, Jack, Jack, yeah. And, Jack and Hagar, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now we're finally seeing the payoff, as you say, for a storyline that was very much like you have no name. Now you're kind of blind. Yeah. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. The girl has no name. Yeah. It got a little repetitious. But that scene at the campfire with Ed Sheeran, the funniest thing was they kept on his close-up like one and a half seconds too long. Like, <laughs> okay, we get it, Ed Sheeran. It's Ed there, Sheeran. It's cool. It's right? cool. He, but the thing about Ed Sheeran is he's just like ugly enough to be in it, that campfire. It, like Ed Sheeran... Listen, his music's amazing, but Ed Sheeran looks like he could be like a commoner in a not so great group of soldiers sure. that's like that is supposed to just guard the forest or whatever. Cuz Ed Sheeran's got like straw for hair. He's kind of chubby, you know, like that it's he kind of looks like he should be in Game of Thrones. Fine, Ed Sheeran fans, come after me. I, li listen, the guy looks like he could be in Game of Thrones. It's not like they threw no. in Jeremy Piven and they were yeah. like, yo, check him out. Oh, He's yeah. in Game of Thrones. No, I agree with you. He, yeah. didn't, look, he didn't look out of place. Yes, no. that's exactly what it is. Like All these people were up in arms on the internet being like, that was the most distracting cameo since this other no. cameo. And I was like, no, it, he, they looked like he, he didn't come in. riding in like, on dragons, hitting like a, a, right. a vocal box, going like, mm -hmm. Game of Thrones, I'm a single on a guitar. Like, it, it's, he was just sitting around uh, a damn yeah. campfire. I just wish they gave him some lines. That's yeah. all. Because mm. the song was great, but then that whole scene. And they, his face was on the screen yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And all he did yeah. was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like my acting career. Like from <laughs> <laughs> just like minor roles on a couple things going like. <laughs> <laughs> just reaction <laughs> shots by McGregor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, uh, let's. Let's. Uh, let's get some David Griffin in this. I'm just so happy the show is back on the air. I mean, it is the biggest event in, in television in terms of a drama series. I mean, there is nothing else like it. It is the, it's true event television. There's mm -hmm. very few shows that, Walking Dead's not event, I know it's still popular, but it's not event television anymore. This is the one show that you either watch live, mm -hmm. or if you don't watch it live, you stay the hell away from social media oh, because you don't even... want to be spoiled. There's yeah. no yeah. other show on the planet like this. It is just massive outside of like watching like some big sporting event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I love that it's back and it's just done so well. I think this is our seventh season. We take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Everything's yeah. done. I mean, the special effects, the the sets, the costume, it's just so gorgeous. And then what it does is it's such a big show, but the small moments are great. Like, I yeah. love uh, uh, Dardarian, uh, Dundarian, sorry, Dundarian, and the Hound having a conversation. And <laughs> so, what, did, you, did, did you know these people, like, burying the bodies outside? Just, right. like, there's so much going on in such a small scene, but then you have, like, this huge, giant world war going on, basically. You know, all these, all these pieces are moving, but yet it feels small. Positives and, and negatives take away. Give me a couple positives, give me a couple negatives. You know, th this episode, I thought, was just a strong episode, a, a, an introduction. It has to get you back into the story, get you back into the characters. I don't think there are a lot of weaknesses okay. um, to the show. Even the Ed Sheeran cameo I thought was fun. I didn't mind that. Um, I I'm excited for the rest of the season. Emma? Yeah, I Some feel positives, like, for negative. me, positives, I really, really, really enjoyed that opening scene with Arya. And fucking incredible. It was amazing. It, I, hear, I really wish that that was the last scene, right? Right. And Dragonstone was the opening scene. You know what? I could see that. Because we ended last season with, sorry. Yeah. We ended last season with mm. the dragons, mm -hmm. right? And, we're, and they're going off. So they land in Dragonstone. Now there's a little more of a ticking clock of like, they're at Dragonstone. Then we go to Cersei and yeah. we go to Jaime. Mm -hmm. Then we go to Samwell, you know, like at this. And then it ends. You're like, well, where the fuck is Arya? And then that scene has so much more because the Red Wedding was an ending mm -hmm. scene. We have, we're like, where's Arya? Where's Arya? She just killed Walter Frey. Da, 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 da. And then you see Walter Frey and you're like, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, what the hell is this? Because when it opened, I was like, oh, it's the Red Wedding. They're going back to the Red mm -hmm. Wedding. Or, oh, it's something, some kind of Frey thing and they're going to show like a flashback, yeah. which they never do, yeah. right? like they rarely do in, in Game of Thrones. Obviously, last year, everybody knows the drama with the Tower of Joy, whatever. Um, so I would have loved to seen that, that scene at the end, mm -hmm. therefore giving that scene so much, more because it's in and then it hits the credits and you're like, God, if it would have hit the end credits, yeah. you're like, boom! Yeah. Arya just lit the motherfuckers up. Because mm. as soon as they started drinking the wine, I was like, oh, it's Arya Stark. It's definitely yep, her. It's definitely. In my brain, I was like, it's poisoned. It's totally poisoned. Yes. And yeah. uh, it was yeah. so good. Um, so, yeah, that scene to me was amazing. I love everything that is going on with Sansa right now. Yeah. Like, I am so curious. I think to she's going to be the last one standing. Yeah. Because she's just as smart as Littlefinger now. She is. She sees all of his games like, oh, you're going to say something clever, right? No. Mm, whatever. Like, was, she's smart. That yeah. was like when you break up with somebody. Yeah. Right? 
And he's like, can I say one more thing? He's like, you've already said sorry enough and walks away. Mm -hmm. yep. like, she's like, I bet it's something clever. It's Sansa. Boom. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And, I, yeah. and so in, in the dynamic between her and John is so interesting because you see her looking at him going like, you're good at this, yes. but you can't be dad. Right. Because dad was a good person mm -hmm. and that was why he died. Right. Rob too, so, yeah. And exactly. Yeah, so and you need to like, you need, you need to be aware right. that like people and will turn on you. I like, I like the fact that mm -hmm. Sansa spoke up at the thing yeah. and it was like, a, it's a brother sister. Oh right? yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. so they're allowed to, and they're in front of all the people that they think. And I actually kind of agree with what John Stark did was like, listen, they're, it's sins of the father. Right? Sure. You can't keep paying for it because what happens in all gangster movies, in all these movies is they like, they cast these people aside, they become angry, they join the forces and they mm -hmm. know too much about you mm -hmm. and they're going to use it again. Mm -hmm. John Stark realized it full well, listen, we need everybody on our side on this one because it's not a war with Westeros right now. It's a war with the D.D. White Walkers. Right, mm -hmm. We right. also got little lady Mormont uh, hanging around. Oh, I she's love her. So yeah. <laughs> she's oh, great. and that scene where John was like, he's like, where they're like, oh, okay, so like all the men need to fight. And he's like, mm -mm, everybody, yes. right, yeah. everyone yeah. needs mm -hmm. to learn. If, yeah. if, if Leona Marmont is at Comic-Con, I will legit rust the stage and, <laughs> and hug her because I love her so she's much. So I want good. her to be like my niece or something. And we just like mm -hmm. hang out. I take her for ice cream. Like she's on a softball team and I'm like cheering in the crowd. The, Leona Marmont is yeah. incredible. Yeah. Okay. Here's my only other takeaway as far as like a negative, because everything sure. else I found very, mm -hmm. very positive. I really wish that Sam, because this entire <laughs> series, oh, that scene was just this entire series. <laughs> Sam is a, he's a, he's a footstool. He yes. Gets, he gets pushed down. He gets beaten. He's only had one major victory, and it's when he accidentally killed a White Walker with mm -hmm. Dragon Glass, right? Aww. To to actually utilize that much of the show, showing him cleaning shit and pledging in the Citadel is bullshit. I mm. think what should have been because when he finally finds out that Dragonstone is basically a dra a, a Dragon Glass mine, mm -hmm. okay, he he it happens so quickly and it's so convenient that I was like. You get two books out of the restricted section, out of the vault, right? And the first, second book you find, you're like, I'm kind of tired. <gasps> Dragon Glass is in this book. If that whole montage was spent him learning, reading, doing, instead of us seeing shit right. in, in buckets, Ugh. that actual reveal of him finding the Dragon Glass yeah. would have been so much better of a I payoff, definitely in my don't, opinion. I don't disagree with mm. you on that. I Because I do think that, you know, obviously they were trying to set up that you know, Sam's gone off to train to be a maester and he's excited about it, but like, it's this awful, awful process. Yes. Like it is not glamorous at all. So that finally, cause I think there was good payoff in the scene where he was with the other maester who was basically doing an autopsy. Archmeister Ebrose? Yeah. And he was, and he, and basically Ebrose, it, that's his name, right? Yeah, Archmeister, Archmeister. I always remember Ebrose. like the guy from Harry. He's been in yeah, so much exactly, stuff in Harry no, Potter. Exactly, no, it's so true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who no. basically, Jim yeah, Jim Broadbent, yeah, who basically yeah. says to Sam, oh yeah, I, I believe you. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so there was good payoff there where it's like, it, cause it seems like Sam is just being like shoved down. Well, that's mm -hmm. the, and that's the point is like, it would be nice for him to get a victory somewhere. Cause he goes home to his, his family last season right. with Gilly mm -hmm. and, the, and they're like, get the hell out, you fat ass. Right. right? Which was awful. Mm -hmm. and, but if he was actually like showing something because Jim Broadbent, uh, Archmeister Bros, when yeah. he says the wall is stood, the wall is stood. It's sort of like, I, I compared it last night uh, with my buddy. I was like, it's like Joe Paterno in football. He ran the power eye for 40 years. And he's like, it works this year. It's going to work next year. you got to pass the football. Mm -hmm. you got to actually believe somebody. And the fact that Sam has seen it and other people have seen it, it's not just like Sam coming down and being like, hey, uh, so word is, there's a white one. <laughs> 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 I killed, I killed yeah. all the dragon mm -hmm. last. You, have to, you guys have to believe me. So for him to maybe get a winner on his side, somebody within that Citadel, right. because the Citadel yeah. can't be stupid enough to know that, that, this isn't happening mm -hmm. right now, that other people are seeing it, other people are talking about the wildlings, all that kind of stuff. That was one thing that I wish we would have got a little more of an impetus of Sam. Mm -hmm. Doing the research. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could see that. There's just a lot to thought. get through. There's a, it's a huge cast. We I still know. didn't see Melisandre. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's yes. just a lot of people to talk about. We only saw Danny for two minutes. And yeah. there was no dialogue until the very end. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they got to the giant Monopoly board, as <laughs> Sinead so eloquently put. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did. I mean, listen. Overall, obviously loved it. I think it's a great jumping point for the next totally six agree. episodes. When it ended. I get really sad when the episodes end because yeah. I'm like, especially now we're so well, almost done. And, and, and I mean, mm -hmm. and the thing about the show that I've always liked is that it it plays out very much the same way reading the books does, mm -hmm. where Martin's chapters are short. Yeah, 
they're short and they keep changing point of view and that's exactly how the show is so mm. uh, yeah. you know okay. it's over before you know it i know right mm. i know well here we go guys six <laughs> more weeks of game of thrones uh moving on next i want to talk about these emmy nominations uh yes because i think well, I, I appreciate everybody that, that tweeted at us about the Emmy nominations because yes. I think we were all in very much agreement. The fact that Leftovers got completely snubbed across the board. Yeah. No, no, no Justin Thoreau, no Carrie Coon, uh, no, not even, uh, I mean, getting nominated for a drama series, we knew it was kind of a stretch. Because yeah. They been nominated for Hopefully before. next 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 year because they'll be eligible. Again? Yeah. I mean, we're getting the night of, we're getting Atlanta. It'll be eligible this year again for the second time. They've been up twice now. It'll be up. It'll be able. It'll be. No. El it should be eligible next year too, no, won't uh -uh. it? Atlanta, it won't? This is, I don't think so. No, because Atlanta. No, Atlanta, Atlanta, I'm sorry, but I mean um, uh, leftovers. No, it won't be. Uh, this it was their year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. If it All doesn't right, get it this okay. year, it's no, done. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, because. <sighs> I, if Wait, how is that possible? Because how come Stranger Things was nominated this year and they were? And Night of too. Last Night of was le last year. Am I getting that wrong? No, nope, none of the, n Stranger Things wasn't nominated last year. Yeah. None of them were. Oh, that's right. You know, they all came out later. Oh, the Golden yeah. Globes. Golden Globes. Golden Globes. Golden Globes. Yeah. Yep. Golden Globes, Golden Globes again, are what yeah. we were talking about for right. the TCAs right. and uh, right. SAG Awards. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's when Atlanta right. won too. With Correct. Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is their. First this is Emmys? their first Emmys. All mm -hmm. this stuff is yeah. the first time. You can only be nominated once. So, I mean, when you're, you know, obviously not once, but the 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 way I looked at these Emmy nominations, which is kind of a shame, was it's almost mm -hmm. like you've done fantasy football. Have you ever done fantasy football? Okay. Shane, have you done fantasy yeah. football? You know when you hit auto draft? Yeah. They just auto drafted from last year, basically. There was very few surprise nominations. The fact that, listen, Modern Family is a very, very funny show. But it's past its time. Like yeah. the fact that it's still getting mm. nominations is kind of bonkers. House of Cards. House yeah. of Cards. House of Cards is good, but it's not. We don't call it one of the best shows on television right, right now. Shows like Fleabag should have been recognized. Mm -hmm. The fact that you had three nominations. Three best supporting actresses in a comedy series from Saturday Night Live is yeah. bonkers. That is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> there are so many females out there crushing it in the comedy space. And so you only get one supporting actress nomination from Anna Klumsky in Veep. Granted, she deserves it, but there's nothing sure. there's nothing else out there, Emmy voters, mm. that you couldn't get a best supporting yeah. actress from in a comedy series. It is a it is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And <sighs> sorry. I, I listen, I, there you don't nominate uh, th something like American Gods, or what? Ma American Gods wasn't American even Gods eligible. will be, yeah. eligible. Yeah. Eligible. Right. be next, next season. Right. Yep. You don't nominate something uh, along the lines of Taboo. There was nothing. There was no even mm -hmm. mention of Taboo, which I thought was an amazingly powerful series. Yeah. There's just there was a lot of misses. Yeah. There was a ton of misses. And 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 Allison uh, Keene, who writes for um, Clutter.com, mm -hmm. who will do the Performer of the Week in a bit. She had an amazing article, so if you want to go read it, she hit it. Yeah. I don't. I want to hear your guys' thoughts I, on snubs. I was surprised that Legion didn't get anything. Legion got nothing. You know, mm -hmm. Aubrey Plaza didn't get a thing. No, mm -hmm. and and to me, that was the show that made me go. And I've I've always liked Dan Stevens. Yes. I liked him on Downton Abbey. Yep. Um, but that was the show that made me go, man, he is a great actor. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, yeah, I was heartbroken that Justin Thoreau didn't get nominated for Leftovers. Did, As yeah. you say, it's like, I agree that, okay, maybe best drama would have been a stretch. And I wonder if it's just because, like, people aren't watching the Leftovers. I but, guess. like, for awards, that sh uh, shouldn't be a thing. Agreed. Agreed. Um, well, I, I think it's like you said, Makuga, it's, it's they're on auto draft. I think they just over yeah. and over. We, we saw it during, like, the. The Granted, Breaking Bad is considered one of the better series of all time. Sure, but sure. Because every year, Breaking Bad and Mad Men, Breaking Bad and Mad Men. I'm like, there are other good shows on, on besides TV, Breaking Bad and I, Mad Men. Like, Liev Schreiber again? Yeah. He's good. Um, I love Liev Schreiber. Fine. I think he's a great actor, but he it's just... really one note in that show. Yeah, it's yeah. like, but like, you compare him to like Bob Odenkirk's performance. I mean, and Anthony Hopkins in Westworld? Yeah. That, that's, that's just a name. Anthony Hopkins has an incredible career. He's one oh, of the yeah. greatest actors of all and time. But he just, I mean, Transformers, he is not yeah. trying. Like, no. if you, he's so good, he, you can't tell the difference, but say, he's not and trying. And don't get me wrong, I very much enjoyed his performance on Westworld. He's good, But it's yeah. not like that was a career-making performance. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree a lot with uh, 
you know, some of the stuff from Baskets and Pamela Adlin from Better mm-hmm. Things. I thought that was great. Obviously, super agree with anything Atlanta. We, we oh, gushed yeah. about that I know, show. I know you Amazing. like Grace and Frankie. You got Jane Fonda well, yeah, on there. I yeah. think Grace and Frankie deserve yeah. and I And I said it when I was watching. I love it. B.D. Wong from Mr. Robot was actually a pretty, uh, like, yeah. a decent nomination. Yeah. yeah. I think they got it totally right with Handmaid's Tale. Absolutely. I think all the nominations for Handmaid's Tale was, was like spot feud, on. Like Feud, um, yeah, those got, were good. Yeah, those were yeah, great. I mean, I said that they should all be nominated. Betty and, and they did. Betty and Joan. Yeah. Our girls, right? Like, I, I loved that series. Um, Even though the guy kept saying Bet and Joan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Betty. 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 Get it. It's Betty. Um, there, uh, only Matthew Reese got um, uh, nominated for Americans. And granted, this was kind of not Americans' greatest scene. Girls got nothing except for Riz Ahmed. And, like, they got two guys getting nominated, but none of the, the actual girls got nominated. I got a little bit of joy out of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, oh. so did, so did I cuz I I can't stand girls. Right, I, know, right. I know Joe or right. David was really upset about it. I didn't I didn't you know what I didn't think of would I'm of course going to blank on her name as I'm trying to think about it but for best supporting actress I know we had some to want to talk about Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. What's her name from Better Call Saul? Yeah, correct. Oh. Kim Wexler. Actress. Kim Wexler, the yeah. woman who plays Kim Wexler. She's she is incredible. On Better Call Saul. No offense yeah. to Millie Bobby, Bobby Brown, but Millie Bobby Brown, yeah. not yet. Maybe when she gets older, she's more experienced. She can't act like the woman who plays Kim Wexler right. on Breaking. It cannot act that well. No, that or like Samira Wiley on Handmaid's Tale <laughs> yeah. or yes, Tandy yeah. Newton on Westworld. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? No, I, I agree. And <laughs> a show like Rectify that has never been recognized, that mm-hmm. I, David and I freak out about that show. Nobody got nominated for that show. No, Nothing ever, got nominated. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. that is a shame because that, that I mean, that's that's one of my favorite shows maybe of all time. You're talking about shows like Detroiters, Man Seeking Woman, Speechless, Catastrophe, Fleabag, Search Party. A lot of these shows that are underrated comedies that nobody got even recognized for. Yeah. Catastrophe is one of the better comedies. Three yeah. people from right. SNL. Three. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. the fact that SNL like tops the nominees, like it's one of the most nominated yeah. things at the Emmys. It's a little bizarre. It's not that show isn't good. Donald Alec Baldwin as Donald Trump was great for the first three episodes, and I'm like, Jesus. We the get only, it. The only person that maybe should have been nominated is Melissa McCarthy. Yes, for Sean Spicer. Spicer. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that was that was totally a vision. I, yeah. Now let's go over to the Stranger Things because I'm I'm eating a, a gallon of uh, I told you so stew because the fans are like oh it'll get nominated you're right it did get nominated it I did will get nominated. I will say though and I am a big fan of Stranger Things sure. that I was actually surprised I was surprised by how much love Stranger Things got and I was surprised by how much love Westworld got and these yes. are two shows that I really really enjoyed yep. but genre shows like that mm. don't usually get that much right. love no mm. and True. a genre show like Legion should have gotten yes, some love. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you all know I couldn't stand Westworld. I, I, I know I'm going to watch season two because we're going to have to for this show, and I will begrudgingly watch I'll grind my teeth <laughs> that whole damn show. Oh, man. But uh, all those nominations are a joke. That show, n- nobody deserves it. Maybe Evan Rachel Wood because she kept crying and dying. I thought Whatever, Tandy uh, was pretty spectacular. She was, Tandy I thought was, she was great. Listen, I love Tandy Newton, everything she does, but her storyline was s- silly. But that last that last scene earned her the Emmy nomination mm-hmm. when she's on that trolley or, or, or like the the subway. Yeah. Now, Stranger Things, David Harbor, one hundred percent. He was fantastic. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. Loved him. Uh, I don't know if the series as a whole deserved a nomination. Millie Bobby Brown getting nominated is is an insult to Carrie Coon and everything that woman has done on television. Okay. Uh, not getting a best supporting actress nom for the leftovers. Millie Bobby Brown getting it for she says all of 10 words the whole show she bleeds from her nose and she eats waffles <laughs> you could do that david i know that you're a powerful man with a great beard <laughs> emma you could do that Sinead, i know you can do that absolutely <laughs> to get her an emmy nomination <laughs> is bonkers and to give barb a best guest appearance the only reason barb got nominated and millie bobby brown got a millie bobby brown goes and does all the talk shows and she raps and she's adorable and she's 11 awesome Great. Barb is like, justice for Barb. Justice for Barb is not giving Emmy nominations to them. It's not. It's Mm. not. (laughs) Justice for Barb is her being on Riverdale. You know what I mean? And she she was still looking for justice on Riverdale. She's she got it. She's always taken advantage of. God. (laughs) Poor girl. And I and I think that Millie Bobby Brown is she's adorable. adorable and she's got a great personality and she's a and she is talented. She is definitely talented, but I but even as someone who is a huge fan of her, I'm like, really? Yes, yes. You should be saying really. You should say it longer. You say like, and you know what? You know what it is. It's like, it doesn't mean you're not talented when you're young. I mean, look at look, no. look, look at the Jackson Five. But once Michael get a certain age, what the Jackson, the Jackson Five are incredible. I know, but what I'm but what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, when Michael got Jackson got older, the songs had a little more 
oomph to him because yes. he lived a life. You gotta like go through. You gotta go through some stuff. You gotta yeah. uh, like Bieber. I, I'm not a huge Bieber fan, but his latest album. It's a little better than his last one because yeah. he's getting older. He's got some weight to him. He's got some some heartache. I mean, his voice like, still sounds fifteen, his, but yeah. he's knocking out some pretty bad. Yeah, you, you got to earn it, you know. And I think as an eleven year old girl, or however old she is, I mean, she just doesn't have that extra thing that it takes to become. She, maybe when she gets older, she'll be great. She's but not like, now. She not now. as a <clears throat> as a girl who is an actress mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, if does that make sense when I say that? Like. Her personality, her presence, yeah. just her every day, mm -hmm. who she is as a person, and having a huge role, and you know all she's this a stuff. She's a cult hero now, right? And sure. she is. She's very like respectable, and she's mm -hmm. adorable, and she's also classy. And I give I give her all the credit in the world for 100%. being that young and being able to handle herself in Hollywood at, at that kind of age. But that also shouldn't be what the Emmys are about. Right. And mm -hmm. I felt I felt like it was. It's like leaning towards what we know, like people's choice to be about, yes. or yeah. like you know where it's like this popularity people contest. People watch because yeah. if Millie Bobby Brown wins, people will watch. And it's like I don't, I don't know. Like maybe Emmy voters, that's really how captivated they were by um, mm. Eleven, and also what's her face, um, Shannon Purser's character, Barb. Barb, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, Barb and, and Eleven, right? Yeah. Like they they like shocked the world and how popular they became. They became like viral in a, in a matter of minutes after yes. that episode had like come out after that show had come out. Right. So uh, that's fine. And like maybe they really were taken, but it just surprises me because I mean like we're we're also watching those shows and yeah. how come mm -hmm. we can see it but a gajillion other people who voted Correct. couldn't. Right. I'm with I you. Don't know. I'm with you. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Emmy noms, guys. Obviously, we're a little passionate about it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go on. We'll do a quick Comic Con preview. Uh, as you guys know, we'll I'll be there uh, we this will. this week, starting Wednesday. I'm getting down there Wednesday. Say hi. Yep, I'll, I'll be, be down there Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, awesome thing we have going on. Um, we there is a live movie talk on the Thursday, but it's going to be mostly like a live collider event. Unfortunately, Emma will be covering a bunch of panels. I will day. be. <laughs> She's knee deep in panels. Uh, David and I will be there. I believe Sinead, you're coming quickly, or maybe on the Thursday for the live event. It all depends. I have okay. to check out my sketch. Yeah. yeah. There, and there's a fan meet and greet afterwards. But again, if you see us on the floor, you see us walking around San Diego. Stop. Say hi. Grab a picture. Whatever you guys <laughs> want to do, we will be there. I just want to go around and say what you're most excited for, panel wise, or to see while you're at Comic Con. Sinead, we'll start with y'all. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be. I'm not actually gonna be doing a lot of panels. I have a lot You're of interviews. Doing press lines? Yeah, I'm yeah. doing a bunch of press stuff. But okay. I am super excited. This is just random, but I am super excited to see the FX exhibition this year. Yeah. Mm. Um, they have like an Atlanta type like photo thing, and they sure. also have the Legion experience. Yeah. Um, so I kind of just want to check it out, just because I feel like FX has been such a huge part of the very little TV that I do watch, yeah. you know? So it's, I'm excited because I feel like I'm going to get to kind of have some fun there. And, golf. Um, and then <clears throat> press stuff, really. I'm doing some random shows um, that I won't bad mouth on the air, but <laughs> um, I am reluctantly invested in Inhumans um, <laughs> only because I am holding on to every single hope that this show is going to be better than what we have seen of it so far. Right. I will be interviewing the entire cast. Cool. Um, and you should get a long red wig. Right. She just like walk <laughs> up to her and be yeah. like, "Hey, what's up, girl? <laughs> yes, queen. You want to borrow this one? You can, because um, it'll be better for sure. Um, but no, I am a little bit interested just to kind of like get because that leads us into Agents of Shield. Right. And I just kind of want to get like some backstory on like the mm -hmm. show and kind of see because I'm doing like the execs too, so kind of see what their vision is and. Cool. Just got a better idea for what's to come. Um, I, it's giving me anxiety, to be honest yeah. with you. And humans has given me a little bit of anxiety because I was cool. so stoked on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. David Griffin. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's just so much. <laughs> so many things. So so many you CW look, you shows. <laughs> you have a very mischievous look on your face right now there, D. Griff. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited for Friday's a big day for me. Friday's probably most excited I am because I have a few panels 
And two of those are Outlander mm-hmm. cool. and Vikings. Yeah. And they're back to back. I'm actually going to have to be doing a little running around here and <laughs> skip out a little bit yeah. of it. Well, it's so, good that you're so in such great shape now. You oh, yeah. yeah I, I can run. I've been running at yeah. the Rose Bowl. Um, so I'm going to go to Outlander first, and then Vikings is right after that. Mm-hmm. And after that, it's the Harley Quinn, Batman, DC animated movie premiere. After oh, that, yeah. all Ballroom 20s. This is very exciting. Oh. Also, we have, we have Gifted. Yeah. We're looking at We're going to have J- Josh and I are going to be in Ballroom. If you want to see us, Josh and I, we're going to be in Ballroom 20 all day Saturday. So are you. Yeah. I yeah. mean, well, I'm Together. Yeah, I'll we'll all be, be there. We'll yeah. all be there. Three yeah. fourths of TV talk will be there. Maybe she'll yeah. show think, up. Yeah, I'm Em and I sure. are going to come the vests full of flash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the booze. Just yeah. all of the booze. Every yeah. time we hear Flashpoint, take a shot. Yeah. 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 I, I was going to say, I feel yeah. like my entire life is just going to be in Ballroom 20, but Hall H on Friday. Hall H yeah. on Friday. Because, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Because you'll be Hall H on um, Hall H on Friday. Friday yeah. Yep. Hall H on Friday uh, for Fear of the Walking Dead, yep. Walking Dead, everything. And then. Um, mm. Ballroom 20. Uh, Game, Game of Thrones is Friday. Too. Game of Thrones is Friday, yeah. Uh, when's Stranger Things? Friday. Friday. It's wow, like that's a fr- all Hall H, H is wow. like TV, TV Friday. Friday. Wow. Yep. And then Saturday, obviously, all day Ballroom 20. I will say the thing I think I'm most looking forward to is this is the first time I'm ever walking into Hall H. I've never even been inside oh, of Hall dang. H. And, and I'm kind of, I, I really want to see if Walking Dead does anything that is of substance at, at, at Comic Con because yeah. these last season and a half really hasn't been exactly fan serviced. Yep. So. yep. Well, they're and also in a little bit of heat right now, too. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Why? Oh, because of the stuntman the, that the passed stunt away. Man. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it'll oh, be kind of interesting. That was so sad. Because um, for sure they're going to get sued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like, I know that they did stop production. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we'll see. We shall see. Yep. Uh, Emma Fife, yep. what do you got? Well, I mean, I I'm literally just at the mercy <laughs> of whatever collider is supposed to me to go. <laughs> so, like Thursday, uh, Ellis was just talking to me. He's like, "Hey, I think we're just gonna have you like cover a bunch of stuff on Thursday." And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, whatever. Awesome. Just send me, tell me where to go." Yes. Um, yep. There is a big. Uh, so this was the 20th anniversary of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, and so they have this big fan event going on for a good chunk of the day on the 22nd. So, cool. as a big Buffy fan, I'm hoping I'll maybe be able to right run over there at some point and check uh, that out. I, know, I, that. I didn't even, I was never a Buffy fan. I know that a lot of our fans that watch the show yeah. are big Buffy fans. I, I never watched, but I didn't know that I was friends with a girl on Buffy for a long time. Claire Kramer? She oh, was yeah, on the yeah. show for a long time. Oh, I yeah, that's literally the email her. I got today. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Claire Kramer. I was going to say, her publicist emailed me and was like, Claire is available for interviews. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah. Go get She's friends doing with her. a movie. Yeah. yeah. That's the email I got today. Um, also, I have tentatively scheduled is like uh, the Black Lightning Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, cool. Um, and Legends of Tomorrow, which I yeah. haven't really watched. I'm looking forward to the Black Lightning panel on Ballroom 20 because that's part of the Ballroom 20 footage yeah. Uh, yeah. on Saturday. I keep forgetting Star Trek Discovery is going to be. I know. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's Saturday. Day. That's Saturday, so I think. I'll tell you what. T- Comic Con for us now, there's so much TV stuff at mm-hmm. Comic Con now. Mm-hmm. So we are. There's in, also Riverdale panel, too. I know. The, yeah. We're going first thing, Riverdale panel. That's exciting. Yeah. I'll, I'll text you, let you know what happened. <laughs> Please do. I actually just yeah. got an invite to the um, Star Trek Discovery press room. I'm hoping. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I'm, you I'm, should do that, even if you don't need to do it for colliders. Yeah. <laughs> just, just show, show up. Be like, hey, what's show, happening, guys? Just show up with like a, uh, hey, like do, a spiral do you, notebook. Right, do, you, like, do you have a camera? <laughs> no, I'm just uh, here. Um, yes, now tell me about, uh, more about the bridge. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> the, um, the one thing about uh, the Riverdale panel, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping the guy that plays Jason Blossom is there oh because my God. Oh, yeah, he's, he's our buddy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's been tweeting you us. just like yell it out in the middle. Jack! <laughs> It's, it's me! Look right. out! I, I, I said you were creepy looking, but in a good way. Look out on that one! You're a real handsome guy. Uh, so yeah, it's it, we're really really excited. So again, if you guys see us down there, please stop, say hello. Yeah. Um, especially Trevor. Especially <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> now, uh, I believe uh, Adam. Do we have any drum roll? Do we have a band that's coming out? We got a big announcement. Pick of the we're week. Putting on. Oh. We're, do we, <laughs> did Ray even put a graphic? Not as Adam? exciting as the he did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, we've been told. Oh, here we go. Good for the microphone. Good for the loves it. Starting <laughs> Monday, July 31st. 31st. Ooh. Monday. 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 Collider TV Talk will be daily. daily! <laughs> we did it. Y'all ready for this? Adam psyched about it. He's loving it. Now, um, Jack Jams wait, 2017. What? You mean that everyone at home gets to watch TV Talk every single every freaking single day? day. Wait, Josh, like Monday? Monday. Tuesday? Tuesday. Wednesday? Whoop. 
Yeah, not not Thursday. No, Thursday. Friday. Friday. Not Friday. Friday. <laughs> you know it. God, we are so awesome. We are crushing it. So thanks to you guys. Oh. Thanks to all the fans that have always been tweeting what's happening with Daily, saying in the comments, we are going daily. Now, here's the thing. Because of schedules and things of whatever, the panels, it's going to be a shorter show. It'll be between 25 and 30 minutes mm -hmm. every day. We're going to talk a ton more about TV that's actually happening, a little more in-depth on news. Uh, if sh shows don't happen, we have tons of free reign creatively to do whatever we really want with the show. So it's just going to be so jam-packed full of TV content. Uh, not sure exactly what time it will air, but more than likely like 12, 1230 every day. It won't be live to start, but I think for bigger episodes, we probably will do some live stuff. It will be a two-person panel, so it will more than likely just be me and either David or Emma or Sinead. For bigger shows, we could do three. Um, I, you know, I really want to do this. I know that, that you guys like only two people with two people. We can talk a ton. We can also like David and Emma can do episodes. Emma and Sinead can do mm -hmm. episodes. David and Sinead can do episodes. Uh, and you, you, we can do what, really whatever we want on a daily thing because sometimes there's just not a ton of TV news. Sometimes there's a lot more shows. We have to get right into shows. So when fall starts, we'll be hitting it all steam go. Obviously, too, this is a creatively revolving thing. So when we think we like something, we'll push a little more in that way. We have so much creative control going daily. We're building a whole new set. It will not be on this set. Uh, we are going to be, I'm working on designing the set right now. So it'll look really, really cool. It's going to be a completely different looking show. Same energy, same craziness that you get from us every week. Now just on a daily basis. And you're like, I want to see the four person panel. So do we. Yes. It's just a matter of timing, scheduling, uh, a lot of different things going behind the scenes, but everybody on this panel mm. will still be a very, yes. very, very important part of the show. Whether David's on twice a week or Emma's on three times a week or Sinead's on twice a week, I, I'm complete. And we're going to get other guests in because TV talk has become such an important part of Collider. And you guys have been amazing, amazing, supportive mm. people to the show. Believe you me, it is not lost on us. We are going to knock it out of the park for you guys every single day. So again, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go around the, the panel. Tell them what you think. Tell them what's going to happen, how you look forward to what's yeah. happening. Well, I think the really cool thing about going daily um, and also having it be a smaller uh, smaller cast at the table it just means more intimate conversations about shows that we are all passionate about. So obviously, like, I'm not watching Star Trek, but I'm watching Riverdale. So that means that in the morning, Josh and I can like really get into it, mm -hmm. or Josh and I could talk about The Bachelor, or yep. like things that you know, and then it also allows people at home to, to really get excited about certain days of the week. With that being said, you ha still have to watch every day. Yeah. <laughs> because that's how shows grow, and that's the important thing. And it's like, um, if you like, if you wanna see a movie, go to the movie theater, right? If you wanna watch things, if you wanna see things get bigger and better online, you have to watch them. So we're open to suggestions and stuff like that, but I'm actually really excited because I feel like it's gonna be a lot more intimate. We can get into detail a lot. And that's like the one thing that we hadn't figured out how to make better, which was people weren't getting enough of that one show that they Correct. love. And this yeah. way, that is guaranteed. You will be able to get your fix on that show that you watch every single week, and it won't be it's so structured and yep. timed down and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah. David. Yeah, I mean, too, I mean, if you've watched, you know, Josh McCuga has a Josh McCuga show. He's interviewed Emma, myself, and Sinead, of course, and he's very good at that one-on-one -on -one conversation. I mean, it's, it's going to get more intimate. It's going to get goofy. But you're going to get more stories, I think, out of it. Because as we're watching TV, we have all these thoughts going through our head. Now, we have to fly. Yeah. We're doing this to break down the episode. Okay, what are your, what are your points? Get, yeah. to, get through this. Highs and lows. Twitter questions. we got to go, got to go. Now we can kind of elaborate a little bit more. Definitely. And be like, you know, hey, yeah. what was going through your mind when you were watching Preacher last night? What was going through your mind when you were watching Westworld? Josh, yeah. how much you hate robots right now? Yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I'm very excited for yeah. Daily yeah. TV Talk. Awesome. Yeah. I think for me, we mentioned the idea with Game of Thrones of it being event television. Mm -hmm. And this format definitely encourages that across the board with TV. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to watch TV Talk the next day, fairly early on in the morning, it's like you have to watch the show the night before. Yeah. So it just encourages people to immediately have those conversations and get really, really excited about the shows that they are excited about. And as Sinead was saying, with an everyday format, we do get more time to yes. talk about the shows that we have to just be like, yep, it was great this week right. in highs and lows. Mm -hmm. So right. I, I'm looking forward to being able to dig a little more into the shows that you guys want to see. So like, let us know, yep. mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Shows That's, like Outlander. Yeah. <laughs> and Poldark. And Poldark. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Poldark Mondays. Yes. Poldark Mondays, folks. Poldark are coming. Mondays. Yes. Uh, so again, <laughs> July 31st, we're going daily. There's not a 
besides Game of Thrones, there's uh, sporadic TV throughout the week. So we're going to be, you know, working on formulating some things, yep. some new shows to watch, some other stuff. Um, but it is really, really exciting that we are going daily. So thank you again for all your support. Continue to watch. Again, this is 25 to 30 minute episodes, shorter things. So you can watch them and move about your day. Collider is turning into a television channel, a television network, where we're going to have daily content for some of your, your favorite shows, like Jedi Council, like Heroes, like Movie Talk, like TV Talk. It's now, you can just tune in all day long, watch at your leisure, however you want to do it. And it's quicker, more passionate, fun content. So again, here we go. July 31st, you guys yeah. made it happen. <laughs> we're getting weird. Let's go to Preacher. We are running really tight on time yep, right yep, now. Yeah. We are really up against it. So let's talk Preacher, and then let's uh, we're going to really have to burn in turn yep. here. So, David. This episode was okay. Kay. I don't know. I, I love the fight choreography. Oh, spoiler. There's a, I'll say there's, there's a great fight towards the end yep. um, with Dominic Cooper, or with some guy who tortures people for a living, which is fantastic. Yep. But oh, the yeah. episode itself, I, I thought, I don't know. I mean, we're learning more about Ruth Nega's character, mm, which is interesting. But... Yep. This show, especially after watching Game, because Game of Thrones and all these other, it's it, it doesn't hold up it as felt well. Like we got a slam on the brakes. Yeah, this a little bit. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, there were again that that one fight yeah. was incredible, brilliant. Yes. yes, and also Cass's sparkly butterfly shirt. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. like Cass is my favorite He's, character. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. If he wasn't just, on the show, the show would I'd be hurting. Yes. Yeah, hurting, yeah. I, I totally agree. This episode was saved by him, and it wasn't really about him. Yeah. But we so. do see, you know, we do see Graham McTavish coming into New yeah. Orleans at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. So yep. uh, let's go Friends from College, the pilot review of Friends from College. I watched the whole series, unfortunately. Um, I, did you watch the I whole watched thing? two, three episodes. Three. I watched yeah. three. Yeah. You watched three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What'd you guys think? I liked it. I didn't okay. hate it. Like, yeah. I, this is, did a lot I of hate like going on, on, on. A lot of yes, people don't like it. There's so much hate going yeah. around for it. I didn't love it, yeah. but I didn't hate it. They were like, oh, it's a horrible series about horrible people. And I'm like, did y'all watch Girl Boss? Yeah, like, yeah. No. That was a terrible show. My problem with it was, it reminds me a lot of my friends from either high school or college when yeah. we get together, we're idiots. Uh, but there was very little maturity that happened. I watched the sure. whole series. There was very little maturity that happened throughout. A lot of the actors are very lovable people that do some pretty shitty things. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a series on a whole. I thought it was, it was fine. It was well done. Um, the I, I will say a lot of it felt very improv mm -hmm. so I think a lot of it wasn't written as much as yeah. it was like an improv scene, almost I, like right. a Curb Your Enthusiasm, just yes. not, nowhere near as good, especially with Keegan-Michael Key. Yes, and I, I felt like the scenes were a little disjointed, like they didn't yes. really flow together, and because of that, in every episode I watched, there was one really genuinely funny scene, yes. like in the second episode when they go to the like, gender reversal streetcar named yeah. Sire, I was like, oh, this mm. is so accurate of like experimental theater. And I lived like... in New York for two <laughs> yes. years, a little over two years. I can't tell you how many times a friend would be like, hey man, um, we're doing a reimagining of yep. Shakespeare's Romeo yes. and Juliet with yes. two chicks. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. That's fucking terrible. And then it's so, it's that is, New York is that. And then, and then yeah. the high school gym yeah. Kind yeah. Of, yeah. 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 comes and starts yeah. forming up. Incredible. <laughs> I think the show, again, like you said, I, I think it's like, you go out to dinner and your your one side is amazing, but a lot of the other things on your plate just aren't very good. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought was friends from college was just there wasn't one character on the show that I was rooting for. Mm -hmm. There yeah. wasn't one person. It's and, funny and because that stuff in a comedy the, you need that. Yeah, and it, it was funny because like the guy from Ally McBeal who plays the husband of yes. the really awful woman, yes. mm -hmm. like. At first, I thought he was horrible, and then I was like, no, actually. By the end, you love him. Right. Kind of my favorite, maybe. Yeah, correct. Was that and Ari's wife from Entourage? Yes. Okay. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That's no, not her? No. Mm -mm. Oh. No. 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 Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. No. It was fine. That's my review of it. Yeah, I think, you know, out of, if we're going to give it out of five friends from college, I'd give it like a two and a half. It's right in the middle. Yeah. It's nothing. Two and a half sounds good. Yeah. yeah, I think it, it saves by the cast. Is they're very talented. It was if it was with a lesser cast, it'd be painful to watch. These people are really good. They so are we were, very talented. We yeah. were watching it, and Amanda was like, "Oh, this is trying so hard to be catastrophe without the humor." Catastrophe, so good. So good, and it, yeah. Okay, uh, let's go to performer of the week with our good friend Allison Keen, live via satellite from Atlanta. Allison, take it away. Hey everybody, I'm Collider.com TV editor Allison Keen here with the latest pick for TV performer of the week. 
Now, it can be tough in this era of peak TV to have just one winner each week. So some actors on my list keep getting pushed back because there are other shows that are ending or I want to get in a specific mention for that week's particular performance. So consider this a little bit of a make good for not mentioning her sooner. But my pick for this week is Betty Gilpin for GLOW, which stands for the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, on Netflix. So Betty Gilpin really came out of nowhere for me because I never watched Nurse Jackie. So when she briefly appeared on American Gods, I think everyone else, just like me, sat up and took notice. She was a total scene stealer as essentially Dane Cook's angry widow. And even though Glow ostensibly belongs to her co-star Alison Brie, it's Gilpin who again steals the show and makes it as good as it ultimately is. Now I really liked Glow in the end, but it took me a few episodes to get into it. What I loved from the very start though was Gilpin as former soap opera star Debbie Egan, who finds new life and a new career in women's wrestling. Now, very much like the story itself, it's Gilpin who plays an effective foil for Brie as the hero and the heel. And one of the best moments of this first season is when Debbie gasps and realizes that wrestling is a soap opera. But there's so much physicality to this role too, where the women did their own stunts and it's incredibly empowering. Over the course of the season, we see Debbie as a new mom with a failing marriage, finding both physical and emotional confidence in her time with Glow. And as Debbie, Gilpin is smart and relatable and affecting, and her arc is what really makes the show work so well. She gives a vulnerability to the role that makes her triumphs feel like our own, and in an ensemble where there are a ton of great performers, she manages to really stand out. If you haven't watched Glow yet, it's a very fast and easy binge watch, but give it a few episodes if you aren't convinced immediately. Um, and so that's this week's pick, Betty Gilpin for Glow. And don't be a stranger on Twitter if you have nominees for TV Performers of the Week, by the way. But now that Game of Thrones is back in the swing, I'm assuming that every week will probably be taken up by a member of that cast. But we'll see. Makuga, back to you. Thank you, Allison. I uh, totally agree with Betty Gilpin. I thought she was amazing on Glow. I didn't see anything about Glow. She was Glow. great on American Gods, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So... Uh, let's go to highs and lows. We're going to burn through these because we have a bunch of Twitter questions. When I sent out a tweet this week, you guys sent in some really, really good ones. So uh, let's start highs and lows. Sinead, what's up? Snowfall. Getting, getting get, better. It's getting, getting better. better. Yeah. yeah, it's getting better. Agreed. I didn't watch no. this week. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch this week, but I love the pilot, actually. Sure. Um, I'm sorry. So uh, a fan tweeted me about this. It's on True TV. Again, a very uh, Andrea Savage wrote, uh, wrote directed uh, like the pilot, and she's the star of the show. Mm. Very... If you are, are LA, you know like the UCB comedy scene. Yeah, I thought it was really well done. I think she's very, very charming. Whereas she, it's almost like an American catastrophe. It has a very mm. catastrophe feel cool. to it. Sorry. So I was uh, very you impressed. Watch this? It's on True TV. True TV. Yeah. 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 All right. Hi, Sinead, What's next? Thirty for Thirty. Francesca and Mad Dog. <laughs> Francesca and Mad Dog. Uh, I thought this was going to be one of the weekest Thirty for Thirties in mm -hmm. ESPN. I actually loved it. I think you'd really like it. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, I definitely know yeah. Mad Dog Radio. It's a sports know. documentary on ESPN. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the most yeah, influential yeah. like guys from New York City. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Francesa. Francesa. I like that. <laughs> All right, Letter Kenny. Okay, it's this Canadian series. Have you ever heard of this? No. Okay, my buddy Tanner got cast in this. Okay. It's coming up in the third season. You can't find it anywhere. That's why mm. I texted yeah, you. Can you find me some illegal links? Because you can only get it in Canada. I found so, season one. Did you find season one? I found one? season one. So we started watching episodes, and I think my computer got a virus. It is, <laughs> it is hysterical. Mm. It's about these country bumpkins in Canada. I don't know. It's it's such Absolute, bro yeah. humor. It's mm. almost like a mix of uh, Trailer Park Boys, Wet Hot American Summer, and ah. Fubar the Movie. If you ever seen Fubar the Movie? If you want to see an amazing movie, it's called Fubar the Movie. Okay. It's 2000. They got all kinds of praise in uh, Sundance. Canadian mm -hmm. humor. It's off the wall. Letter Kenny. I was just, I was dying. First I heard Fubar was in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, they explained what Fubar meant. Yeah. Shay, what's next? I'm um, sorry. Uh, the Carmichael Show. We haven't talked about it much this season. I don't know if you guys watch, but mm -hmm. I, I, everything about The Carmichael Show is absolutely fantastic. So if you want a good kind of life changing uh, sitcom, not life changing, but like kind of game changing. Sure. Carmichael Show. Yeah. I have, really quick, have any of you guys heard of Chewing Gum? It's a British show? Yes. Do you watch it? No. Mm -mm. Well, I'll, we'll talk about it. Go at ahead, some point, um, Chewing Gum. It's like a it's a Netflix UK show, yeah. oh. but they do have it um, on Netflix here now. Um, it's kind of like 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 this awkward African American girl. She's awkward. She really wants to lose her virginity, and it's British. Oh, I know. I know you're talking about. I've yeah. seen it on my Netflix. Yeah, I've seen yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's not like the greatest show in the world, but it is really funny. Chewing yeah. Gum. It's Chewing in an easy binge. Nice, Boom. nice. All right, Shay, what's Twin next? Peaks. So I feel like with Twin Peaks, what happened was David Lynch got this big elaborate puzzle and he just threw it on the ground. And then on the Bob 
origin story episode, he just mixed it up to make it even more confusing. And now, like, slowly but surely, all the puzzle pieces are coming together. Like, you're starting to see how the storylines okay. are connected to one another. And I feel like, cool, now I sort of get where this plot is going. I felt it and more... And that's how many episodes in now? Nine? In ten. Ten. This is ten. Yeah, this is ten. I was just happy this to see ten. more Jim Belushi. Yeah! You gotta see more Jim Belushi. Yeah. It's always a good thing. Yeah. According to Jim. Yeah. Yep. Right. The bold type. Okay, so this is a show on Freeform, which uh -huh. I saw Ooh. a lot of women tweeting about how great it was, and so I was like, I gotta check this show out. Okay. It was really fun. What's it about? It's about women that work at basically a Cosmo-type magazine called huh. Scarlet, okay. and it's these three women, one of whom has just been promoted to a writer, one of whom previously was promoted to social media director, and then the other one who's still stuck being an assistant, uh -huh. and they all have their lives their lives are together and in shambles to varying degrees. Um, and so we're like a modern day Mad Men kind of? A little bit, yeah. I don't know, it was really fun. And uh, surprisingly, my favorite girl K-pop group, one of their songs was in the pilot. Oh, I was like, what is going on? Bang, bang, yep, boom. Are you yep. sure you're not Korean? I'm positive Emma? I'm not, but cool. I do enjoy Whistle by Blackpink. <laughs> 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 All right, final thing here on Highs and Lows. Oh, my Hero Academia. Yeah, it's such a good show. Stain, the villain this season, the hero killer, is amazing and really, really creepy. It was great. Do you watch this? It's on my Hulu queue to watch. It's really cute. It's I, I would. It's really really accessible to mm -hmm. an American audience because it's based on like American superhero culture. It's hard to keep up because I keep flying over to the UK and I'm watching The Lock right, and I'm watching so Hold true. Ark yeah, and yeah. oh, there's a show called Fearless with the <laughs> aunt from. She's the lead from the aunt from um, Peaky Blinders. Oh, this lead is called Fearless. Very good show. Fearless. Yeah. Huh? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. That's it. Highs and lows. What do we do? You want to do some turtle questions tonight? Yeah. Let's why not? Rip you know. Let's, Let's do, do as many as we can. Uh, until we got to get out of here. All right. All right. At Chris in the Zoo says, if you were road tripping across the country and had to fill your car with three TV characters, who would you choose? Uh, Phoebe, mm. Rachel, and Monica. Because <laughs> I think I would have a blast. Just me and the gals. Yeah. Crushing it. I like that. George, Jerry, and Kramer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I like Elaine, but I really have the, the guys, I think. I would pick... Um, Ann Perkins, Leslie Nope, and uh, uh, Andy. Andy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Parks and Rec. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Sinead? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would pick uh, Chuck Bass from Gossip Girl, <laughs> um, Archie and Jughead. Oh, yeah. oh good, good. Well, you good. know what would be funny good. if you picked like somebody who's like like this archetypal villain that's yeah. just like yes. you had like Gus Fring, <laughs> Tony Soprano. And like maybe Walter White, like yeah. like on a long like how that dramatic that would be. Oh, it would be man. horrible. That would be a great <laughs> road trip. All right, Shane, what's next? Ed Heston Roberts <laughs> says, in honor of your approaching nuptials, oh. what show had the best wedding scene? I'm gonna go back to Friends when yeah. he said, when he I says take you, Rachel. Rachel. I take thee, Rachel. Yeah. Okay. Now here's the thing. I remember I just that. Watched that. And now Saturday. I'm having nightmares about me saying the wrong name. Like I take you, Mandy. I mean, your name is Amanda. Fuck. Why did I say Mandy? <laughs> like, I, it it is in my head. Like I'm I'm gonna be up there. My buddies, my brother's like you need to drink before the wedding i was like fuck no i was like if i fuck up this this ceremony oh my god yeah but, no that's terrifying yeah th i take the rachel that is one of the best 100 best 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 it yes. really is it's really good david um the red wedding <laughs> i was i was gonna say game that's of true thrones, game of thrones has a red and purple does, wedding yes. it's hard to yeah. top that i'd probably go with that it's hard yeah, to top it's pretty those. good uh there was there's been a couple good wedding scenes in doctor who uh oh, okay. amy and rory's wedding was really interesting and then there was a whole christmas special that was where you were introduced to donna noble and it mm -hmm. turned out she was like getting married to a like space demon so it was great <laughs> oh, no. nice. yeah, all right. it was fun. All right. hey, what's next? <laughs> um all right at uh our severn valley says Valerie says, if you host Jeopardy, will you wear a suit and tie? Uh, yeah, well, I kind of have to, but yeah. I'm, I want to really take it back and wear some of those, like, Johnny Carson 70s suits. Yeah, you should. Like, you know, some Josh McCuga style as I host Jeopardy. You know, can't just graze and blues. You got to yeah. go loud. You got to uh, pull out the shark suit, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shark dress man. Uh, Brian Yetman says, why do you guys hate on USA shows so much? Suits is actually pretty entertaining. I keep hearing that. My, my sister's a big fan on of USA shows. My sister's shows. a big fan of Suits, too. Yeah, and we also, suits. we all watch Mr. Robot, I think. Yeah. 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 I just, uh -huh. suits, I've heard my, uh, people love suits. Mm -hmm. I just like, I guess I didn't get into suits, mostly because the show was called Suits. And USA is kind of sunglasses and smiles. That's yes. where, you know, Pacific yeah. what, Blue. What shows uh, on there have we hated on? Like what? It, Burn Notice. Burn Notice. Even though uh, I love Gabrielle Noir, I mean, my God, that is a beautiful yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, like what else is on that network? What's on Suits right now? I mean, what's on USA? Oh, what else Psych was on USA. Oh, The Colony? Was which I oh. didn't like season one. I watched all of season one, but uh -huh. I heard season two was a lot better. Uh -huh. But I just I am I doing got the off. press line for that. No, no, no. Oh, so maybe I'll watch some USA. Yeah. Boom. You got Woo. It. Yeah. 
Uh, we don't hate USA. We don't. It's just not like our, I wouldn't call it like my go-to network, if you yeah. know what I mean. And there's so many Suits episodes now, it's possible to catch Yeah, up. I'm not catching up with that. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Maybe we'll watch a sorry, series Brian. finale like Good Wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Brian. Uh, All right, what's next? Jacrispy Oakley <laughs> says, which classic TV show or movie would you reboot? We've got we've got this question oh. a lot, decent amount. Maybe I shouldn't have picked that one, but hmm. go ahead. I feel like <laughs> no offense, Jeff. No, no offense, I feel like and I and I love <laughs> this series uh -huh. as it is, but I feel like it could be really good with a modern flair. Is Bewitched? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you know I'd what I mean? That. Yeah, I'd watch that. I actually probably would watch that. I the Mary Tyler Moore show. My mom would make me like we would watch that together. I think a, a cool fun show going on in local news because local news is becoming more and more of a yeah, moot point totally. as, as life goes on. It could be kind of a pretty fun show. Like yeah. Reboot of Mary Tyler Moore. Maybe like the Waltons, but like the great the great grandkids. Oh. Post depression. Nice. We got a little bling, got a little money maybe. See you how Waltons picked mount. the Waltons before. I know you're a big fan, David. I know you're a fan. <laughs> or a Little House in the um, Prairie reboot. Oh. oh no. A no? Bigger oh. house in the suburbs. <laughs> big house in the suburbs. Yeah. yeah. No thanks. Um, you guys remember that show Madeline, the yeah. animated show, oh, right? Yeah. I'd love to see like a live action action Madeline, but they're all like teenagers and Ooh. like starting to break Ooh. rules. Yeah. Oh, right, Live right. action give it, Doug. No. Do, and give do, it the Riverdale do, treatment. Do, do, do. Oh, Ooh. no. But I don't Quail see. Man is his alter identity. Yeah, but oh. I, 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 I don't want to see like, I don't want to see Skeeter having sex. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. That's just. I don't want to see any of that. That's weird. Because he's blue. Oh dear God. <laughs> oh dear God. Uh, right. No, they need to never ever touch a Doug. It's okay. Yeah, that's legendary. weird. It is sacrilege. All, All right, what's next? Shanae? Ben Rayner says favorite TV bromance. <laughs> We've had since JD and Turk Scrubs. Yeah, J mm. I, I mean, I think it's Chandler and Joey. Yeah, Joey and Chandler are pretty great. Yeah. Who are these characters? Is this friends on the? <laughs> uh, yeah, JD and Turk is Scrubs. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, Bromance. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not really a bromance. It's like a buddy cop, Arya and the Hound, I would oh, watch. Oh, yeah. that's pretty good. <laughs> in Pretty Little Liars, there were some really epic bromances. Was Caleb it? and uh, Mr. Fitz, they okay. were pretty tight. I know that there people get would tweet us like these two guys from Psych, which was on USA. Oh, yeah. I never watched that. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. I'll, I'll, I was going to say Supernatural, but they're literally brothers. So they're actually that, um, brothers. Ollie and Diggle. Oliver and Diggle. Oh, yeah. Oh, Arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I, uh, Cisco and, um, Barry, Barry yeah. in Flash. Mm -hmm. yeah. Arthur it and Buster. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They were like borderline in love with each other. Yeah. And it's I love them. Oh, so uh, well, we got those great episodes, not anymore, but with uh, Tyrion and Bronn. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. Game of Thrones. I miss Tyrion Bronn. and Bronn. Yeah. Uh, it's so oh. good. Yeah. It's ultimate romance. Uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, Martin Starr and Kamal Nanjiani's character. Right. Mm -hmm. They're, they're great together. Uh, Guilfoyle and what's the other guys? Uh, What's Camille's name? I have regret. Yeah, okay. okay, what's next, Sinead? Uh Dan Campbell says, should TV execs update the so-called demo since it was created when people died in their early 60s and now routinely <laughs> live well into their 80s? Well, I think the, the hard part is, is that people are still consuming TV at, at a later age. My yeah. aunt and uncle and my mom and dad, cr or my, I just got my parents' Netflix accounts. They watch all of Grace and Frankie. I mean, they are consuming more television. Mm -hmm. And they're, my mom and dad are getting close to their 70s. My aunt and uncle, same thing. So I think the way TV is changing I, I think the demos have been dead for a while, uh, and I think the Nielsen ratings have been dead for a while, too. I, I think the, the actual industry itself is going through such a major change in that thing that, yeah, mm -hmm. get rid of them. Yep. Sinead, let's burn through, like, this, la th th this next question, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Roberto yeah. says, can I marry Sinead? <laughs> LOL, seriously, though, which show, in your opinion, is untouchable for a reboot? We just said Well, we Doug. just said Doug. There's so sure. many. Yeah. I uh, wouldn't Seinfeld, touch any of those Sopranos, 90s yeah. shows. The Wire. The Wire yeah. Friends. Yeah. Hell Friends, no. Because no. you can't update The Wire because it's still relevant. Yeah. yeah. It's still, yeah. yeah. Okay, Sinead? Um, Chipper says, what's a season of a TV show that gets a bad rap but you'll defend? A season four season. of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Season four of Buffy. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go season two of The Wire on the docks. A lot of people didn't like season two. I like. I, I think I like season it. five of The Wire Ooh. people consider with the newspaper. I, I love the and, newspaper yeah. season. And also season two of Legend of Korra. Yeah. Legend That's another one. Uh, Ooh, season yeah. one, two, three, four, um, and five of A Secret Life of the American <laughs> 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 Just amazing. the whole show. The whole show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole show. All right. Let's yeah. do uh, two more. All right. And Andrew Middlemoss says, if the Inhumans doesn't live up to the quality bar of late seasons agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. slash DC TV, do you think Disney will drop regular TV for Netflix? I don't know if it's for Netflix. I, I, listen, they've got Cloak and Dagger coming out on Freeform. Uh -huh. yeah. They've got uh, Gifted coming out on Fox. It's all part of the ABC Disney family, yeah. so they're not going to... I don't think they're going to drop it totally, mm -hmm. but I, I think, you know, Inhumans, this kind of stuff, I think network TV, they're going to 
kind of try and get away from yeah. to get mm-hmm. to maybe like an FX or yeah. maybe we have sure, Legion on that right. show or, or, or right. you know, some of these bigger. Yeah, We things, have to but. also see where the Marvel Netflix universe is going to go to because yeah. if that's oh, also. We've got Defenders on Friday at Comic-Con yeah. too. Right. So if like Defenders is not that good, oh, I feel like yeah, that and Inhumans is not good. If Inhumans isn't good and Defenders isn't good, then it might be time to like take a step back and mm-hmm. really think about what their plans are for, for sure. doing stuff for like sure. that. Yep. All right, one more. Skeletor says, hey guys, does it bother any of you that there just isn't any more good classic sitcoms anymore like Friends, Seinfeld, Raymond, or Roseanne? I think there are. I'm actually really glad that we don't do three camera laugh track sitcoms as much yeah. anymore because mm-hmm. it's very distracting. I think it's not. I think that shows like that because there are still some multi-camera shows and they just don't do as well because I think that the shift with TV in terms of comedy is wanting to see comedy that is more of that single camera office, Parks and Rec, Modern mm-hmm. Family mm-hmm. style. Like, So it feels a little more real. Yep. 100%. Like Catastrophe is one of the better yeah. comedies I've ever seen. So yeah, yeah. It's still, yeah. They're, they're alive and well. They look, yeah. they look different. It's they different. look different. Yeah. I agree. But, but yeah. they, they, they still exist. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. All right. Finally. No, we're done with Twitter questions. You guys are great. That was, <laughs> that was a terribly anti-climactic way to end <laughs> Twitter questions, and I apologize. Uh, let's go to the... My turn again? Do it. Uh, how, do, how do I just start again? This, go. this will be our second last okay. pick of the week. Because we're There's going no daily. Week. Well, we may do it on Fridays. Yeah. We'll oh, do it on okay. Fridays. But the, it's time for the pick of the week! Oh, hey. It's Amanda hey. Breeze. Hey. Oh, it was my pick this week. Uh, I picked Planet Earth 2. It got nominated for a ton of Emmys. Uh, I, I have this on my DVR. And when I just want to watch something and just like kind of zone out, or if you like uh, drinking or, you know, some drugs or whatever you like to do on your couch, uh, this is, I'm not saying like do heroin and watch it. I'm saying, you know, if, if you live in Washington or you live in places where Colorado. weed is legal, Vegas? Planet Earth 2, <laughs> Vegas. Planet Earth 2 is unbelievably gorgeous TV. I would watch Planet Earth 2 anytime, anywhere. It's my. Pick of the week. Let's get the hell out of here before we do. Sinead, where can the good people find you on the internet? I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that's so Sinead.com. I will be at Comic-Con um, this week. If you guys have time to make it out to any of the Collider stuff, please do. Make sure you're at the meet and greet, too, because we love drinking beers with you guys. So Appreciate I'll see it. you guys there. Awesome. David, great fun. I, I, too, will be at Comic-Con, and I'll be there all week. So just find me there. I'll be checking out some Outlanders, some Vikings, be hanging out with Makuga. You're keep the beard for the con? Oh, I just got this thing trimmed. What's well, this thing look oh, tight? Oh, nice. I got, got like the sides all nice and tight. Yeah, tight. no, no, no. This is this is staying. I'm I'm keeping the beard because I don't want any more dislikes in the videos. Hold on. You know what? You you have like a really good Viking beard look now because you know uh, Ragnar Lothbrok was bald by yeah, the Yeah, I know, end. but I can't. That's true. I just need some tattoos on Ooh, my head. Put some tattoos mm-hmm. on your head. I had a picture. You see my picture on Instagram? Yeah, sick. I had to embrace the baldness. I've been shaving my head since I was 22. Dang. So I, I can't. Wow. I can't. I can't do what Makuga's doing clean, over here. You're a clean, yeah. clean man. So. Yeah. All right. Emma. I am Emma Fife. I can be found at San Diego Comic Con this week, just like everybody else at this table. And on Twitter and Instagram, at my name, Emma Fife. Yep. That's her. That's me. Sinead, David Griffin, myself. I'm Josh Makuga, at Josh Makuga on Twitter and Instagram. Again, we'll all be at Comic Con. Stop, say hello, take a picture, whatever you guys want to do. The Josh Makuga Show on YouTube. And tonight, WGN Movies for America. Uh, It is Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Check it out if you have WGN America on your cable. That's it. Again, starting July 31st, Collider TV Talk will be daily. You will see the crew every day rocking it TV style. We love you guys so much. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.